with Mr. Review. We spring into action with breaking reviews. Hello, friends. We've been talking about how government over time has served as our protector of liberties. But we're also hoping they're correcting our wrongs. We've been talking about civil liberties and civil rights. Oh, one of our favorite topics. Well, Mr. Review got a call recently and someone asked him about, Mr. Mr. Review, what's affirmative action? Isn't this an attempt by government to correct our wrongs by violating our liberties? Well, this is a big debate. And our court has been involved in this debate for a long time with some inconsistent decisions. But let's just give a quick, quick review of what affirmative action is. It is one of our fundamental contemporary debates when it comes to civil rights. Remember, some justices feel that the Constitution mandates for all of us to be colorblind. If equality teaches us one thing, it's that we're all equal, meaning there are no differences, and therefore we shouldn't even acknowledge those differences. But then there are other judges who argue, well, wait a minute, what do we do when it's not equal? Who's going to correct? And there are some judges and justices on the Supreme Court that it is their mandate to correct the injustices found in our society. Of course, conservatives tend to see it more colorblind and liberals tend to see it a little bit more as a correction. Remember, when we talk about the Supreme Court, Republicans tend to be more judicial restraint and Democrats tend to be a little bit more judicial activism. These both positions come into play when we talk affirmative action. Well, affirmative action basically means a correction is needed, that there's been past discrimination with respect to gender and race. And so if an African-American or a woman is applying for a particular job or applying for a particular slot in a university, that maybe a little preferential treatment should be given. Now, don't get me wrong. This does not mean quotas. This does not mean the court has said that your university in town must have an exact percentage of men, an exact percentage of women, and an exact percentage of African-Americans, an exact percentage of Hispanics, and on and so forth. No, not quotas, but the Supreme Court has upheld under strict scrutiny, mind you, whenever they use race or gender in in equal ways, it's a difficult decision for our courts. But majorities of our courts in your lifetime have said it's okay to correct some of these injustices for at least as long as we need to. Affirmative action, probably as we go back into history, we began noticing it in the late 1960s, but it was all done with a sense of temporary correction. We don't envision this happening forever, but until we get a sizable number of African Americans and women in certain jobs and occupations and in certain educational programs to provide uh, examples for others to do likewise, we won't overcome our discriminatory past. Some see affirmative action as kind of a little boost up until you're able to stand on your own. Of course, some would say, let them stand on their own. This is a debate worth having because we're all having it. Affirmative action. A number of court cases. I would encourage you and your classmates to look at these cases and to have this debate yourself. Put yourself in that situation. Would you want a little boost up? Or would you want that rugged individualism, wait over time, I'll get there, just you can... Well, it's a debate that we're not going to have here on air. But remember, the court's interpretations have evolved over time. The way the courts have decided in one year may not be the way the court will decide this year. This is what makes civil liberties and civil rights so interesting. Oh. Civil rights and civil liberties? Civil liberties and civil rights? The government protecting our liberties and correcting our wrongs. A study worth our time. A study worth springing into action with breaking reviews. I'm Mr. Review.